Hello and welcome back everyone. Hope you are all doing well. Let's get Jenny and Eladias. Well, thank you very much whoever subscribed. Thank you very, very much. Let's get going. So link code is 192823746. There you go. If you want to join, feel free to join. Remember, Latias does have Reflect Type, one of the most infuriating moves in the entirety of Dynamax Adventures. Oh, right, interesting. That is a, that's quite the lead-off we're seeing so far for the poll. All right. Let's get going. Uh, just uh, sort of in the sort of in the works of a present Godzilla-related video we're working on at the moment. Uh, it's going quite well. I'm I'm very much enjoying. The, uh, the scripting process of those videos. All right, it, it, the fact that I can say I'm doing research for Godzilla video, I, I'm doing research for Godzilla videos, is just, it feels like a dream come true, and it's like, oh my gosh, I love this. Like, the fact that you guys are the ones that enable me to do stuff like that is just absolutely glorious, and I love it. I legitimately cannot thank you guys enough. But let's get going. All right. Anybody want to pop in for some Dynamax adventures? This is a much easier DA than Groudon, so no need to worry, because uh, Groudon is uh, difficult. Hello there, SA14. Hope you're doing well. Thank you very much for popping back from last time. Hope you are doing well. Hope you had a good night. There we go. Five. All right. Yeah, no, we're doing okay. We are. We're doing well today. Uh, sorry we, we delayed a little bit on the startup for everything. Hello, Cat. How are you doing? Sorry, a little bit, little bit of a delay when starting things off. Got a little bit sidetracked with playing Bloon's Tower Defense 6 with uh, Echo. We were doing one of the Bloon boss battle things, and I was like, wait, what are we doing now? Oh, Bloon's. Fun. That was fun. Thank you. Thank you. But yeah, I mean, hey, just a little bit of letter start, and it's all good. It's all doing good. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be good. Yeah, it was a bit of a, a bit of a rainstorm here last night, so not exactly the greatest of sleep, but that's just how it goes. You can't really make it up. Yeah, I'll be able to do that. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, I'm more than happy like to um, cancel out of a lobby and reform it if I know you guys are gonna be popping in. But yeah, Tornadus tomorrow is gonna be on the ticket. I swear, if I somehow get Tornadus in an er like in an early number of encounters for DAs, I'm I'm just gonna I don't I don't even know. It's just gonna freaking figure. Cause uh, Tornadus kind of doesn't want because. Uh, like, I mean, I'm, Latias, I mean, I'd, I'd say it's better Latias goes over odds than uh, Groudon does, because, again, Groudon is an absurdly difficult Dynamax adventure to do. That is, that's just difficult. So, getting that one, again, I'd rather that one be under odds. I like Zygarde. I'm okay with something like Ho-Oh going over odds, because it's a relatively easy DA comparatively to something like Zygarde. But, again, uh, favorite starter, that's Infernape. But yeah, I, I'm still working on the video of is Zygarde or Groudon or Kyogre the hardest Dynamax adventure? Because I still say that there is a very reasonable case to be made for Zygarde not being the hardest Dynamax adventure. Hello there, Panda. How are you doing? How are you doing? Again, if anybody else wants to pop in, feel free to join. But uh, that's going pretty good. It's going uh, pretty, pretty, pretty good here. Zygarde is the hardest, but Groudon comes close. It's easy to have two ice types. It's only easy when you have two ice types. Not exactly. I mean, if you just resist the, uh, if you just resist a move like. Uh, but if you just resist ground moves, like if you're not taking damage from the spread moves, then Zygarde is a lot easier to handle. 
Because it does no damage with Dragon Pulse. Bind does absolutely nothing. So if you use, like, a Grass type, they take no damage from any of its ground moves. If you're fighting Groudon, you... Even if you resist a move like Earthquake or Precipice Blades, you're still taking a, a fairly significant chunk of damage. And that's not even including the fact that it's got Hammer Arm and Lava Plume. Depends on the squad. The thing is, I'm not talking about a, what in particular squad you're bringing into to Zygarde. Like, I'm talking about, like, in general. If you... If you're taking neutral damage from a move like Precipice Blades or Earthquake from a Groudon, you're taking a lot more damage because Groudon has a vastly higher physical attack stat. And if you're, you know, neutral to move like, uh, if you're neutral to ground and you're taking a neutral thing like uh, Thousand Waves, Thousand Arrows, that really isn't that hard um, to hit. The funny thing is it's not X and Y. Uh, S.A., we've actually done an entire video series on what is the easiest Pokemon game. It is the Difficulty an difficulty Analysis series. Uh, go for the Malamar. It is the Pokemon Difficulty Analysis. Of all things, the easiest game is the Gen 1 games. The original red, blue, and green. And the reason for that is, back in Gen 1, you had the badge boost. So, every single one of your stats is a 12.5% boost. And the moves that the NPCs had back then were absolutely terrible. Hey, Neko, how you doing? Come on to the mods, go grab Neko's link, please. Uh, ooh, Armaldo. Let's go for the Armaldo. Let's go for the Armaldo. So, we'll go Persian... Uh... Persian... Then... Musharna, then we go for the, uh, Armardo, and switch out the, switch out the Malamar for the Armardo, that's what I want to say. How you doing? Yeah, and the reason why is just, it's because of the badge boosts. The only reason why the Gen 1 games were quote-unquote hard is people don't like level grinding. That is, that is purely all it is. It is purely not wanting to spend the time to level grind, so you would fight the NPCs at the end game super underleveled. The odds for Shiny Latias, if you have the Shiny Charm, are 1 in 300. If you don't have the Shiny Charm, it is... Uh, if you have the Shiny Charm, it's, if you don't have the Shiny Charm, that is, it's 1 in 300. If you do have the Shiny Charm, it's 1 in 100. And we do have the Shiny Charm, so we are massively... Um, over odds for this hunt. And if you haven't done so already, don't forget to subscribe for more. You guys are the ones that make all this stuff possible. Body press. We do a little pressing. You could indeed call this a pressing issue with body press. The reason I didn't go for a Dynamax this turn, uh, last turn, is that if I use body press, it actually would have decreased the physical attack stat of Malamar as a contrary. Yeah, Malamar is one of those Pokemon that Dynamaxing really doesn't, like, help it, because a lot of the stat boosts you'd want to get, you actually can't gain from it. Oh, nice, that's holding connected. Right, you have no way of uh, affecting the weather, Persian. I do not need a shiny of you, but if I get one, I am going to put you in the same bin as the rest of the shiny giveaway Pokemon. So, yes, there's going to be another shiny giveaway in the, uh, the future. The future. Yeah, again, don't forget to subscribe for more. Yeah, tomorrow is going to be Tornadus, because I would ideally like to get my shiny Tornadus Therian form for Draft League. We do not switch out for this, because I would, I would hope any of the NPC AI bots actually switch out, and they do switch out. Yeah, the, uh... I, I'm, I'm okay with them taking the... Ex swapping out the Execute, because the Execute does absolutely nothing. Well, then again... Well, no, Smackdown. Yeah, no, 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 if you Smackdown, not X's. Or, yeah, no, that's actually fine. That's entirely fine. Um, 
We'll, we'll absolutely be able to stomp Musharna into the pavement, though. My only hope is that Latias does not use Surf, because if we, if, I mean, Latias uses Surf, we're kind of bone. We're kind of boned if it does, because we're, I mean, I'm, I'm low special defense, comparatively. Wait, Forewarn doesn't take into account type effectiveness? Really? Is, is that how Forewarn works? I've never really actually looked into the ability too much, because it's kind of a meh ability. It's the only one I've ever, like, thought about too hard. Ooh, good x -Scissor. Yeah, Malamar's overall stats are not the highest to kind of compensate for the fact that its ability is contrary and it learns superpower by level up, so they kind of decapitated its moves. Well, they decapitated its stats to compensate. Which makes sense. Again, kind of got to keep things balanced. And then, you know, balance, and then the okay, they make Zacian, which, again, yeah, it's Zacian, so that's a, that's a whole other ball game altogether. Yawn. I mean, that does absolutely nothing to any of us. So, I have several questions. I have several questions. Um, if you want, you can Dynamax the Malamar against the Armaldo. I think that's probably a good thing. I could go for a catch of Musharna. Again, we still need you for the shiny living decks. Because we are not going to be starting too many of our shiny Unova hunts until we get the Unova remake game announcements. Well, I mean, we're not going to be doing too many of our Unova hunts until we get the Unova games remade. Uh, what do you need names for, Roost? Uh, you're gonna need to be a little specific. You're gonna need to narrow stuff down, shinies. Alright, what are the Pokemon that need names? What what are the Pokemon that need names, Roost? That kind of is important. Yeah, okay, that's fine. That's actually kind of... Me. Yeah. Could be better, could be worse. Automatado, all of them. I don't know what Pokemon you have that are shiny in the game, Roost. I, I need a list. In either alphabetical or chronological order. I can't help you otherwise. I can't. Why not just screenshot them? Just go into your Minecraft Pixelmon game and start screenshotting all the boxes and just post those. You'll get, what, like 30 Pokemon per screenshot? That'll help. The DLC is great, Neko. Absolutely worth it. It is very fun. It's very, very, very fun. Standing Boris. Favorite rival's Barry. Favorite rival is Barry. <sighs> He's such a good goofball. No, there will be Ryder. I doubt we'll get the end of a game until at least 127 because 127 is I'm not so sure. I'm not so sure we'll get them in 2026. You gotta remember, Pokemon doesn't think about the games in terms of generations like the way we do. So they wouldn't do Gen 10 on the 30th anniversary, at least not in the same pressing way that we would think it is. Hello there, Planty. How are you doing? Come on, the mods, go grab Planty's link, please. Hope you're doing well. Yeah, I mean, I think that there's definitely a very, very significant possibility of us getting a uh, the Generation 10 games in 2026. But I also think they may not do a Gen 6 release, a, a Gen 10 release in 20, 20, uh, 2026 because they, they don't think about the Generation in the same way that we do. Hey, Raman, how are you doing? Oh, great, you Sandstream. Sandstorm. That's, uh... I'm well still cleaning the ring of perfect. Do ah uh, yes, bread man. Zed from yesterday. Ah, uh, I see. I see. Hello, Mudkip. How do you do? How do you do, Mudkip? Hope you're doing well. 
Glad you're having a good day, Raymond. Glad you're having a good, 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 good day. Brock Doom. Uh, it actually... Mm, yeah, I probably will be faster if we switch out for the Armadol. Why does this thing like to attack in me? I mean, it doesn't matter. Oh, just chilling. Good. Good. So, Mudkip, earlier today, I was doing one of the Bloons uh, boss battles against... Uh, Dread Bloon, I believe is what the thing's name is. It's the one where, depending on what phase it's at, it's immune to a certain category of the different monkeys. Uh, we ended up beating all five of its rotations with me and my friend we played against it. It was fun. Uh, freaking the Flying Fortress upgrade of the Monkey Ace is absolutely broken. My Kip. My Kip. I love that conversation. That, that, that moment in the anime is absolutely chef's kiss. My Kip. My Kip. I'm surprised that Deox is caught up to Victini. I I kind of would have expected Deoxys to be trailing behind. Uh, you can take it if you want. Don't take it, don't take it, don't take it. NPC bots are taking it, that's good. Well, unfortunately, well, I mean, either of them were not great. Yo, dear friend. I was about to say, I don't think I have the upgrade unlock to do a boss on your own. Yeah, I don't have. Yeah, I did it with friends. I did it with my friend Echo. It was fun. It was very, very fun. Oh, I forgot to actually turn on the the replay buffer. There we go. Replay buffer has been active. Once again, if you guys haven't done so already, don't forget to subscribe for more. Leave a like, and let's take down this uh plane. This, uh, this jet plane Pokemon thing. I'm really freaking hoping this thing does not decide to be a jack wagon and use freaking reflect type. No, it's all good. It's all good. Thank you very much to subscribe. Thank you very much. I really hope Bloom's Tower just had Dungeon 6 mod management has updated so I can use my mods again. Mod management? I'm I have several questions, Modcap. I have I have several questions. Every time this thing freaking uses dragon breath, I get paralyzed. Every time, without fail. Every time. Every freaking time. It always happens. Um Very Mythical is definitely genocide. I like all of them, minus Sky Shaman. Uh do you dislike Sky Shaman from the flinch hacks? Is, is it because of the flinch hacks? Or, well, Seed Flare, absolute defense destroying potential. I installed Mod Manager so I can get to use mods on Bloons to have a defense six easily. The mods. Well, I mean, that it completely is useless on me because I'm freaking paralyzed now, so I can't outspeed Latias anymore. I mean, unless... Well, unless... It uses... Uh, and Moga uses, like, another Electro Web. Well, no, then I gotta be at the identical staff, so there's no point. Fear Mythical is also genocide. Yeah, there's so many just cool mythicals. It's kind of hard to choose between, like, just four of them to put in a poll. Because, again, there's, there's so many of them. The only reason I didn't include... Of course, it's using Magic Geyser. It's gonna target me, of course. I called it! It always targets me with water moves. Every time without fail. Yeah, the, on the only reason I didn't put Mew on the list is that I knew, alright, if I put Mew on the list, that thing's basically winning by default. So, I'm not gonna put Mew. I debated putting Celebi up there, but I'm like, also, like, you know, I mean, Celebi's kind of like that same, like, tier as Mew, where, like, it, people will go for that one, like, immediately. So, it kind of, like, ruins the whole fun thing of the polls. Like, you know, let's go with, let's go with Jirachi, because Jirachi's, I mean... People like Jirachi, but it's not, you know, it's not like as super well loved as some of the others. The Sky Shaman movie is my favorite. Interesting. I I think that's you might be one of the first people I've heard to say they like the Sky Shaman movie. As like their favorite. Alright, Christopher, have a good trip. 
I mean, I love basically all the Pokemon movies, but I've never seen, like, as, like, the Sky Shaman movie be, like, the number one favorite. And that is our first Latias takedown of the day. 231. No, not 234. 241. 231 Latias DAs. I, I have no clue when this hunt is going to be over. I, I hope. This hunt ends soon. I really hope it ends soon. You know, it's, it's gonna figure I'm gonna get a freaking perfect attack stat Latias when I catch it. It's gonna be adamant nature. Interesting. What What is the interesting roost? The fact you said interesting kind of scares me. No shiny Persian. No shiny Musharna. No Mushina. No shiny Armando. No shiny Latias. It does not exist. Oh, female Armando. That's actually pretty rare. So Pixelmon is fully broken and unplayable right now. How did that happen, Roost? How? Can I keep the Latias pathing? Alright. Let's make another lobby. Again, if you want to pop in, feel free to join. Some of it broke vocals. Interesting. You can, you can, perfectly happy to have you pop in just. Perfectly happy. Uh, because there's not too many people in the chat right now, the typical wait one minute 30 seconds rule does not apply. So anyone can just pop in immediately. They won't work outside of battle. Was it possible to use Pokeballs outside of battle in Pixelmon? Again, I, I again, I I don't know Pixelmon, so you kind of need to I explain what was and wasn't usable. Uh, just what is your your in-game name, so that we we can know if you join in the path thing? Because I'm always happy to you know give a path for a share out. Yes, they did before Legends Angular ever thought of it. Ah, yeah. I I don't know how I feel about Lemon Arcanine having the out-of-battle catching thing and, like, whether you could integrate that into the mainline games effectively without, like, kind of breaking everything. I mean, you can pop in. We're always happy to have people pop in for a lot of bath things. We love having people join in. That's the reason we do Dynamax Adventures with viewers. Because shiny hunting uh, legendaries via Dynamax Adventures outside of eight specific legendaries, which you can only shiny hunt in Generation 8, because there are Generation 7 legendaries, or Zygarde, which is the shiny locked back in Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon, and I believe Sun and Moon. Um, but if you're doing anything else, it's better to just go hunt back in Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon. So we do the DAs with viewers so we can play with you guys. You wonderful viewers. Want to know what tipped me off to Pokeballs being broken? Got Shiny Zygarde yesterday with NPCs. Nice! Yeah, I got my Shiny Zygarde with NPCs as well. Um, what tipped you off that the Pokeballs were broken, Roast Chicken Man? But yeah, I'm... Legends Arceus' is outside of battle Pokeball throwing was pretty good. The only thing is, I don't know if you would actually be able to integrate them into the mainline games with the mainline battle mechanics as effectively. Because at that point, there'd be no reason to actually engage in regular battles with Pokemon. It would be better just to basically camp right next to them and just chuck Pokeballs at it. Unless, if you throw the Pokeball at it, you know, doing that you know, sneak up mode and then it breaks out, you're immediately locked into a battle, and then it gets basically like a two free attacks on you, or it's more likely just to flee immediately. Well then, that's interesting. That's, I mean, Terrapagos wasn't, it broke out of the Master Ball. It was... Terrapagos just didn't go back into the ball. 
Uh, none of these are particularly good, but like Slow King is probably the least bad. Yeah, uh, Eternatus is, uh, ooh, Crocodile, of course, the MC Crocodiles. He broke it, though. Yes, it did break the Pokeball. It did break the Master Ball. But that was, it didn't want to go back into the ball, whereas Eternatus would have been a better app, because Eternatus br destroyed the Pokeball by bursting out of it. Okay, we go Vanillish. Ooh, Vanillish, a Selgor. Vanillish, and then a Selgor. Hello there, Terra Mars Gal. Welcome in. All's well. Today's going very, very well, Terra Mars Gal. What in the world? It's so basically wasted two Master Balls on a Keldeo, therefore unplayable. Fair enough. Can you reset to before you wasted those two Master Balls? Or was that not possible? <laughs> it, did break, it did break the Master Ball. Okay. If you guys haven't done so already, don't forget to subscribe for more. And leave a like on the stream. So yeah, we switch out Slow King for Vanillish, and then I'll take the Aselgor. Um, you can use any move you have, either Future Sight, or you can go for a Nasty Plot. So I'm just going to go for Fake here, and then just next turn Dynamax and use Max Mindstorm. Okay, there's no resets behind... Okay. Again, Roost, I don't know, um, I don't know Pixelmon, so I don't know what does and what doesn't do what. Okay, that's, that's actually, like, that really didn't do that much damage. That's, well, again, we have, like, relatively high stats, all things considered. Relatively across the board, we have decent stats across the board. Why the f you freaking use Flash Cannon, you AI bot? I swear, these, these AI bots, they're morons. These AI bots are absolute morons. The body is difficult enough when you straight eyes. Yes. Yes, Latias is difficult for that. The reason is purely down to Reflect Type. One of the most infuriating moves in Dynamax Advantage is it turns Latias' typing into the typing of any of you four. Which, considering Latias' weaknesses all heavily interfere with one another, does mean you do need to actually plan stuff out a little bit more. It's, it's incredibly infuriating. There are certain Pokemon that can basically just brute force Latias, because, like, even if it uses Reflect type, it kind of doesn't really bother them. Uh, yes, Evan, we have been doing, we have a Zygarde hunt. We we have been doing a Zygarde hunt. Ooh, that's why we love fake tears. Don't worry, Meta, once you get Latias at DA239, we'll teach you about Minecraft Pokemon. I mean, I, I, I hope you, I will hold you to holding me to playing Minecraft if we get it there. I will hold you to that. This means you want to shiny and Bulbasaur and Pixel Mom, and now we need to catch combo. The ideas out of the question. In my Pokemon Shield file, I have Shiny Zygarde. I do not have Shiny Zygarde in my Sword file. So that is, uh, that's kind of an ongoing thing. And when we eventually get the, uh, and when we eventually get the Zygarde, that's probably just going to be a shiny giveaway I do. I can only guess what Zygarde. Well, again, it's, it's for the challenge. It's people like the challenge of the Zygarde hunt. Uh, switch out the Slow King for this. Yeah, every, every, I mean, again, it's the appeal of Zygarde, because Zygarde is the hardest DA. It is, it is that appeal of difficulty. Yes, uh, Roost is the biggest Minecraft nerd of all of us here. So yes, he is. Uh, he's a very big fan of Minecraft. Also, new game. Yeah. Yes, the new game is about Zygarde. 
The new game is all about Zygarde. Which is good, because they actually axed the Gen 6 game that was actually going to focus on Zygarde. You know, kind of like how Ultra and Ultra Moon focused on Necrozma. Originally, there was going to be an X and Y2 that was going to focus on Zygarde. And uh, they, they completely axed it. Which... I do wonder why they decided to axe that whole game. Never know why. Ever heard of lightly weathered wax copper stairs? Nope. I have not heard of those. I have not. Why does why does again, I've said it before and I will say again. The AI, when it comes to Dynamax Adventures, deliberately throws. There is no reason for a Copper Raja to use Iron Defense against an Aselgore. This thing is all specially focused. It is resistant to body press. It has no reason to not just immediately go for Flash Cannon. That's what makes me think that the AI for every individual Pokemon is programmed to use specific moves and that it is deliberately designed to throw. Because there is no point in do there's no reason to do that. The AI is linked to the individual Pokemon more than anything. There, There is a pattern to them. There is a pattern to the moves they use. Welcome back to your daily dose of the Hello there. Meat. How do you do? Hope you're doing well. I do enjoy Daily Dose of Internet. That's a fun channel. At the very least, I outspeed it so I can actually get fake tears. Well, I outspeed the uh, vanilla so I can at least get fake tears off before them. So again, it goes for, like, again, a fighting move against that thing when Triple Axle does more damage. But it doesn't know Triple Axle does more damage because it's looking at the base power. Of again, they're idiots. They don't realize that, no, it's better to go for Flash Cannon. These AI bots are morons. These AI bots are literal throwbots. I thought they emphasized that NPCs in the New Academy expansion make it better situations. Yeah, they did the same thing with the Crown Tundra Isle of Armor, where the NPCs added in there legitimately did make better decisions, but not by much. Like, that's the funny part. That's what makes me think this was not an accident the AI is this bad. This was very deliberate. They knew full well they were making the AI Garbo trash. And they just didn't care. Favorite evil team is Team Plasma. Like, why is our decision making not a priority in the first place? I think the decision making was a priority as a way to encourage people to play Nintendo Switch online with their friends because the thing about Pokemon is the franchise was always the intention of getting people to play with one another and you know you work with your friends to accomplish a, a thing sometimes they need to aggressively enforce that idea And uh, it ends up being <laughs> counterintuitive. Because the thing is, the, the simplest way that they could make online, like Dynamax Adventures or online terror raids, be more beneficial to play with your friends over, you know, doing them solo, is for every person that joins those things, you get better rewards. Or, like, for example, in Dynamax Adventures. If the more people who joined, the higher the likelihood was of encountering Pokemon that match well against the Pokemon you're facing. So if only one person goes in, then all right, well, you just everything is random. But if, say, two people go in and you're fighting a ground type, well, there's a higher chance of getting a grass type, an ice type, or a water type. You know, and then... You know, yeah, four people in a lobby, well then, you know, it's guaranteed, like, your back line is all going to be good, you know, Pokemon that are good against the final thing. Yeah, or in, um, 
terror raids in Scarlet Violet. Alright, if two people join, you get, you know, another roll of Urban Mystica. If three people join, you get, you know, two more rolls of Urban Mystica. If four people join, you get, like, five rolls of Urban Mystica. That or two, or, or, or better times. Again, it would be so much better if they did that. I get why they don't do that, because... Again, imagine if Shiny Charms would have more people. That... See, that, that wouldn't really work. Because of the way it actually rolls shininess. Um, it, it ro Every person independently get it rolls for them. So, for example, if, you know, say, you, me, Kayla, and, um, you know, Evan were all in this Dynamax adventure together... If one of us gets a shiny Latias, well, nobody else in here could get, no, um, not everybody else is guaranteed a shiny Latias. You know, that's a good idea, but it would need to be, like, a balanced out where, you know, maybe it goes from 1 in 100 odds with 1 to, like, 1 in 95, 1 in 90, 1 in 85. You know, not, no, pretty much not being, all right, it goes, you know, to 1 in 25 odds for that. You know, that, that would be kind of broken. Five accounts of the shiny gem. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it, it would need to be something like it caps out of like 185 odds. If that was going to be the case. But I, that, that is definitely a good idea. Yeah, hypothetically. Yes. Hypothetically. Purely hypothetically. Yeah. It, it would be a good idea. But again, that's kind of the issue of making something that is actually beneficial without making it too broken. We're in an unfortunate line that they really have not found a way to skirt. Yeah, it's, uh... It would definitely make the goofballs a little shiny as weak. Yeah! It would definitely make this... It would definitely make it way easier for me to get the shiny dice. Doo -doo. If you guys haven't done so already, don't forget to subscribe for more. Leave a like on the stream. Not at all, just Not at all. The thing is, I am all for something that de-incentivizes people from genning shinies. If it means it is significantly faster to get shinies legitimately, I'm okay with that. Because the thing is, the odds of getting a shiny in Scarlet Violet, you know, with the odds of getting a shiny in Scarlet Violet with just the shiny charm, not running a sandwich power is identical to the odds of getting a shiny in this game. It's still 1 in uh, 1,365. It's just that without the need to do the battle animations, the loaded battle animations, it is a significantly faster process. You know, you're, you're basically... Um, I did the math, I think, in a, a previous stream, like way, way, way back when Skull of Isle first came out. Hello there, um, Will, Willski, yay, welcome in. We pulled out some giants in Arceus just with Lanzori. Cartman was, hello there, Stefan, how you doing? But yeah, no, it's, the odds of getting a shiny in Scarlet Violet are actually the same as the odds of getting a shiny in this game. It's just without the in-battle animations that you need to spend your time on as opposed to, you know, in this game. It is an overall faster hunt. Hello there, Chaos, how are you doing? Welcome in. That match that was just done to boss guys. Yes, exactly. And, yeah, by basically cutting out that, because think about... Imagine this. Imagine... Well, actually, you know, there already exists this mod. There's a, a mod people have made actually back for Sword and Shield that is, it puts shiny Pokemon into the overworld, and it is the exact same thing as shiny hunting in Scarlet Ball. It's just you go running around. It is purely down to the lack of animations that you have in Scarlet Violet that makes the hunts faster, even if the odds are identical. Let's well, we actually see the shiny now, so we run the Swiss of Captain the Blonde Counter and let the boat. Yes, exactly. Yeah. It... This kind of goes back into something I mentioned uh, a few years ago, which is difficulty in Pokemon <laughs> does not have anything to do with 
actual difficulty. You know, people saying something is hard or not has nothing to do with, to, with whether or not it is actually difficult to do something. It is difficulty simply is how time consuming it is. So something can be an absolute joke cakewalk, but take five hours to do. That people will say is easy. That that people will say is hard because it takes five hours to do. Or you can have something that is you know hair pullingly difficult, but takes you know maybe three and a half hours to do, and people aren't gonna say that one's that hard. Uh, best Pokemon ability, that is very dependent on the individual Pokemon and the individu individual situation. There is no singular best ability. Okay, I'm just going for more Athens, Bryce. Yeah, I'm pretty good here. It's about that. Um, the other deals are using. Yeah, again, the other difficulty. Yeah, see, that's actual difficulty. Because those are actual, like, well-developed teams. Favorite mythical Pokemon is Jirachi for me. And that's that's kind of the thing about you know the Pokemon community is that difficulty doesn't actually mean difficulty. Difficulty just means the most time consuming. I wish they didn't shiny lock the legendaries in the DLC. I the thing is shiny locking and shiny unlocking the legendaries in the DLC was a no win situation no matter what. There was no possible way that there was not going to be problems either way. Because the thing is, if they make them shiny huntable, well, all you do is you just picnic soft reset them. And then it just becomes extremely easy to shiny hunt them. At the same time, by not having them be shiny possible, it makes it significantly easier to track people who are genning shinies. But whether they locked them or not would have created that problem anyway so if they locked them which they did then you have people who complain about not being able to shiny hunt the legendaries if you unlock them you have the floodgates open for people genning shinies you know it's it's kind of a no-win situation no matter how you slice it and it's why i really have no stake here nor there You know, because I, I, which I mean, I, I think it's, it's game for completely fundamentally does not understand why people enjoy shiny hunting. Like, G Game Freak basically sees shiny hunting as people reducing Pokemon to time spent shiny hunting on a thing, number of encounters, and odds of getting the shiny. When it's not really about that, it's about the journey to get the shiny. Where the community does see it as more. You know, Game Freak is just shiny locking shinies to be a, a dick to spite us. It's like, it's it's not. It's both sides fundamentally not understanding why the other side is doing what they do. 232 DHX. Oh, that'd be, I'd be perfectly okay with that, Mr. Mash. Perfectly okay with that. That's, uh, that's why we do these DAs with viewers. So you guys can pop in. But yeah, no, it, again, it's, it's a complete no-win situation regardless, which is kind of unfortunate. But that is the way things are. I'm like the legendary just made me go back to the OG Gen 5 to hunt as much as I want shiny Zekrom, not through DAs. Again, the best way of shiny hunting Zekrom would be back in uh, Ultra Ultra Moon because it is the fastest way of hunting it. Wait, you can shiny hunt Zekrom back in Generation 5? I thought Zekrom was shiny locked in Gen 5. Is it... Is it not locked in... Black and White 2? The, okay, I, I thought they were locked. Okay, I was like, wait, wait, wait. So I, I know Zekrom and Reshram were, were locked in the original games and Kyrem wasn't. Because of an oversight, I think. But I... Okay, I was a little curious. That you actually don't need to beat the game to shiny hunt. Again, you, you can hunt them in the in the Alola games. Um, 
If I recall, you actually don't need to beat the game in order to shiny hunt the legendaries. You just need to get to like the place you can do the ultra warp ride. You don't you don't even need to beat um Ultra Necrozma to shiny hunt the legendaries. Get how detailed I gotta be in this chat. I'm not mean Kyra, I'm just saying they don't want to do DAs. Okay. Well again, to be fair, Roost. The way you worded it was very confusing. You know, you 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 did say you'd, you'd rather hunt it back in Generation 5 when it's like, you can't hunt it back in Gen 5. That, you you did say something that was impossible. So, there, the confusion was valid. Again, link code is open if you want to pop in for some DAs. No, it was confusing to everyone here, Roost. Everyone else thought you meant the different things. Well, hello there, Solar. Welcome in. That was fast. Uh, they could have made Legends not shiny locked, but higher shots. But again, the reason why they shiny locked the things comes down to the way Game Freak sees people viewing shinies. Uh, Glalie is the best pickup here. Said. I went back to Gen 5 to hunt, even though I want a shiny Zephyr. Oh, uh, okay. Okay, that's okay. That's what you're going for. Ooh, Pangoro. Very good Pangoro. Um, the reason why they shiny locked legendaries is, again, one, the genning problem. But the other is the way Game Freak believes players view shinies. Again, this shows the fundamental misunderstanding Game Freak has for shinies. Uh, no, actually, go for the Starmie. We go for the Starmie, so we go to the left pathing. It shows the misunderstanding Game Freak has for why it is people shiny hunt, which is they shiny hunt for the journey to get the shiny. Which is why they wouldn't just simply increase the... Uh, well, they wouldn't simply decrease the odds of a shining in uh, Scarlet Violet. Because... The way Game Freak sees it is people are not viewing the Pokemon as an individual Pokemon. They are viewing it as simply a number of encounters and a time spent on the odds. As opposed to viewing it as its own Pokemon. There's also the fact that the Mystery Gifts mostly give out the Shiner Legendaries. Yes, that is also the other thing. Again, that goes into the whole genning part of it, where it's how they can more easily track and really crack down on hacking and genning. Where's the flipping little ladies? Yeah, again, it's it's a very complicated thing, and again, there was a it was a no win situation no matter what. It's one of the reasons why I don't really get too worked up over the whole DA thing, uh, the whole like shiny thing, is that. There, it, there was a no-win situation. It, There was no decision that Game Freak could have made that would have not been a bad decision. I guess is the best way of phrasing it. Thank you very much, whoever subscribed. I have Zachary and Rush. I'm trying to DAs. Nice. Being in the Sword of Shield and have a full team of level 80s. Wait, do they obey you? Does, does your team actually obey you if they're all level 80? From DAs? I thought they wouldn't obey you. Huh. Unless DA Pokemon were differently. Uh, keep the, keep the Glalie. Keep the Glalie. So, ideal final team for us in this is... We switch out the Charmeleon for the Starmie. We switch out Charmeleon for Starmie. And then we just go from there. Again... Please do not spam the E. I do I do appreciate the enthusiasm for the coordinated E, but please don't spam. Quick claw. Yeah, I'll go quick claw. Might as well, because I can't I can't get paralyzed from Latias. And none of the other items actually matter. So yeah, just go quick claw. Could be useful. How do you join this again? Um, I can show you how to join it just. Uh first, do you have uh, online. Hello there, Dalton. It was me just jumped across your channel. Thank you very much for that. It was me, Dio. Well, no bubbles so far. Just a shiny Weedle. 
Do not hurt Weedle. We may not be as big a fan of Kanto stuff, but we do not hurt Weedle. It is adorable. We have Pokemon from each gen. Zapdos, Tyranitar, Metagross. Try this out Uh, Dialga, Gigalith. Tyrantrum. I'm gonna need to think about Gen 7. Alola is a difficult one for me. Um, Galar is Duraludon. And then Paul Dea is back. Uh, actually, no, no, not back. Scalper, Roaring Moon. Um, okay, y'all. You have the DLC. So, I mean, you have the DLC. But hello there, Rip Rev. Re guy, welcome in. I don't know how to but welcome in. Um, okay, Roaring Moon is my favorite Paul Dea one. I need to actually check. Everything in Alola to see if I can actually nail down what my favorite Alola Pokemon is. Because there's a lot of them I really like. Because uh, at, at some point I was going to do a series that's basically going over my favorite Pokemon from every gen. That was a project I'm, sl I'm slowly working on. Working on that in conjunction with the Godzilla series we're working on as well. Hello there, Austin. Hello there, Dustin Gravely. Welcome in. Welcome back, Dustin. It's been a while. Um, Alola Pokemon New Cerebi. Let's go to the Cerebi.net page. So I'm gonna go see all the things. Cause like there's there's a lot of really cool Alola Pokemon. Thank you very much for ever subscribed. Thank you very very much. You got 26 of uh, 20, 26, 22 of you. I can't even read. 23 of you absolute Giga Chads here right now. Thank you. It means the world that you guys come out. Thank you very much, Rip Guy. Um, yeah, I've been getting Pokemon since we last spoke. Nice! Very nice. Yeah, we've, uh... Yeah, um, we, for those of you who are fellow uh, Godzilla fans, we have a Godzilla-themed Pokemon Draft team that we're using in the Pokemon International Battle League, uh, Fan Draft League. Got Tyranitar, got Rillaboom. Uh... We got, we got all we need. We, we got Owen. I have, I have defeated my greatest enemy in Draft League, which is a freaking Gouging Fire. I hate that thing. It's like, Gouging Fire is an unholy abomination. That thing refuses to go down. We're talking about a Pokemon that is capable of surviving a Choice Band Adamant 252 attack stat Tyranitar using... Rock Slide. When Gouging Fire has no physical defense or HP investment, that thing refuses to go down. The thing is horrifying. There are very few Pokemon that I dread fighting that are not, you know, box out restricted legendaries, which are generally tournament banned or tournament restricted for a number of reasons. But Gouging Fire is one of them. That thing is just pure terror. Uh, we switch out the... Char... Melian, okay. Who is Solar? I said to Solar, I wanted you to switch out for the Starmie. What are the, what are the pros of choice, Ben? I don't understand whether it's a good item or useless. The... Okay. Solar, switch out the Charmeleon for the Alolan Sand Slash. So, the choice band is... It gives you a 50% attack boost. However, you're locked into using only one move per switch in. As in, you can use the same move over and over and over again, turn and turn out, but you can't use a different move. It, it's a very useful item, but it's a bit situational. So, basically think of it like this. You know how when a Pokemon uses Dragon Dance, it gets a plus one boost to its attacks and a plus one boost to its speed stat? Think of it like a free Dragon Dance attack boost is what Choice Band does, but it lets you, but it locks you into using one move per switch in. It's good, very situational. I'm personally not a fan of the Choice items. 
as I, I don't like being locked into using only a specific move. But the brute force it brings cannot be underestimated. Hello there, Wilkins. How do you do? Do I search stamps, max, raid, battles to join? Um, you need to connect to the internet and search anything is fine and then wait on the anything is fine screen. Uh, I'll give the second thing for instructions on that after. I'm doing very well. Yes, Squishy Adam, you can join in. We're happy to have you guys pop in. Since we have a lot more people joining in DAs, if you were in a previous Dynamax adventure, we ask you wait a minute and 30 seconds before joining in, just so we can let the new people have a chance to join in. Favorite item in DAs is the wide lens. Nice. Very nice. Very nice. Oh yeah, I mean, if you want to wanna host them as well, Wilkins, that's good. That's also very good. But again, that's the, the, there's, there's, well, that's like one rule of, that's like, you know, it's soft rule of Dynamax Adventures, but the other rule of Dynamax Adventures is listen to the instructions of the streamer. If the instructions are not followed, they will simply be blocked. Because there is a way to block people in Dynamax Adventures, by the way. It's fine. Um, what's next? Invite others. You need to specifically type in the link code. You need to type in the link code. It's 192.83746. And then select anything is fine. After we start searching. I don't like using this choice band because it locks me into one move. If I decide to boost my Pokemon, I usually I don't know it worked. Locked into the move, which is useless. Yeah. That's one of the reasons why like, I'm not the biggest fan of the, uh, the Max. About the... Uh, that's the reason why I'm not the biggest fan of the uh, choice items. Again, there is a definite good, you know, good usage to them. Generally, if you're going for a choice item set, you're running for attacking moves. Um, you can dyna uh, Dynamax the uh, Dynamax the Pangoro. Cannot think of the name for a second. Uh, it actually it would be better if Glalie goes for Fake Tears rather than an attacking move. Fake Tears drops its special defense, and we are all special attackers, other than the Pangoro, which the Pangoro will be dropping its special defense anyway, so it's better to go for uh, Fake Tears. Yes, Dynamax the Pangoro. Um, was there a Face Palm emoji if I were to be using it? There is a Face Palm emoji. There, there is. Yes, again, the one rule of Dynamax Adventures is listen to the instructions. If the instructions are not followed, and, you know, again, if you make a simple mistake, okay, one simple mistake, okay, that's okay. But if there is, you know, a deliberate not following the instructions, that is a deliberate blocking. Everything does look silly when Dynamaxed. Everything looks silly when Dynamaxed. Hey, madam, my internet is annoying today. But thank you very much, Temper. Thank you very much. Thank you very, very much. Do love that damage. Is that a crit? Is that a life orb equipped on that thing? Wait, Pangoro didn't have an, a, a life orb? That's a... Ah, Muslim. Okay, that must be an adamant one, then. You... That must be an adamant Pangoro that has absolutely cracked out attack stat, or the Latias has no deep... Okay, wow. Really? Not even... Not even an adamant nature. This must be just a very low physical defense Latias, then. Interesting. Interesting. It's fine, it's perfectly fine. That's perfectly, perfectly, perfectly fine. That is, uh... That's also one of the reasons why some special attackers are a bit better than physical attackers for Latias. is because of the max Wormwind. Yeah, pulse. We get around that attack drop. Yeah, Latias just doesn't survive this turn. Latias just simply doesn't survive here. Again, if you guys haven't done so already, don't forget to subscribe for more, leave a like on the stream, and uh, let's get our Shiny Latias, hopefully. If we end up finishing our Shiny Latias hunt today, we will be moving on to, we will be resuming our Shiny Groudon hunt. And then we will be starting our Shiny Tornadus hunt tomorrow. Thank you very much, whoever subscribed. Thank you very much for that. You know, Latias is being a little bit of a shoe. Latias refuses to sparkle for us. 
Yeah, I never run Choice Scarf because of that. Uh, I don't know, Leftovers, uh, Focus Band. Focus Sash is generally a very good item over the Focus Band. Uh, Charcoal for on Fire Types, Toxic Orb, on Toxic Heal, something like that. But, uh, don't, don't. Yeah, I'm generally a little hesitant to use Choice Items myself. However, I do not doubt their effectiveness. It... There are very specific Pokemon that like Choice Items. There, there are very, very specific Pokemon that like them. Yeah. Yeah. There, there are there are very specific Pokemon that enjoy using the Choice Items. Hello there, Agent Dammy. How are you doing again? Now, there's a shiny Pokemon I don't care yet. Yeah, last time I said a favorite Pokemon was Eevee. When I said my favorite Pokemon was Eevee. Um, you may. I, uh, my memory is absolutely garbage unless it comes to, like, a Godzilla-related things. So, it may or may not have been. But hello there, Damien. How are you doing? Alright. Let's go load up again again. If you were in the last Dynamax adventure, please wait a minute and a half before joining. So, um, Jest, you said you wanted to join in. When you're on this page with the, uh, the question mark for anything is fine, you're going to press the plus button on the controller. Type in the link code 19283746. And then invite others. And then you'll be able to join this one. You need to be connected to the internet to do that. Pretty good, got a shiny... Nice, pretty good today, nice. Very nice. Is there to use attack type booster item with the ones? That depends on the Pokemon. It depends on which Pokemon. But again, there actually is a video we are going to be working on that is specifically about what is the best items in Dynamax Adventures. Overall, it depends on the individual Pokemon for which item is better Generally, for attackers, it is best to go with the Life Orb. My favorite Pokemon is now Charizard and Abreon. It's all the fun. It's free. We just not as much before. Nice. Yes, in, in general, the Life Orb is the best for a damage booster because the 33% boost to all damage output for 10% HP every turn. Thing is, if you're Dynamaxing, it's... 5% uh, of your HP you're losing, and you don't want Dynamax Adventures to go on for too long as is, so the extra power is very, very beneficial. It's also a global damage boost. It's not just individual, you know, only when using a super effective move, or individually only using a special attack. Um, is that you, Jest? I do it. Okay. Um, did Jess not get in? Here's why it lands if no super effective item attack booster. Uh, Jess, did you not get in? Yeah, the wide lens is helpful if you have a low accuracy move. So if you're using something like, uh, like Rock Slide or Stone Edge, generally you want to go for the wide lens. Uh, never guess who I am in DAs. I'm assuming it's Mr. Mash 78. Uh, I typed it too late. It's cool. I'll do this. Okay. Uh, Jest, I recommend refreshing the uh, refreshing the stream. There may be a bit of a delay, and that would help clear away any delay. Yeah, Charizard runs solar power on Sunday. Yeah. Um, is this a solo? Is this a singles battle team? Uh, Thebule. Good fire type move like plant or heat wave. Is, is this a doubles or a singles team? Um, Whimsicott. Uh, Obama's no probably the least bad. Uh, is, is that a doubles or singles Charizard? Because if you're running Charizard, I generally recommend you running it on a team with a uh, Torkoal. 
and just going like four attacking moves. Unless you're doing doubles VGC where it's better to go with a uh, protect as one of the moves. All right, we go Vika Volt, and that is all we need to pick up. Okay, first thing. Okay, I generally would recommend you go just four attacking moves without the sunny day on it, and you have Torkoal on the lineup. And I would recommend Flamethrower over Heat Wave because uh, better accuracy. I believe same damage as well. But with Heat Wave, you have identical burn chance, but also a chance to miss. Um, for this, we switch out... I say we switch out Whimsicott here for the Vika Vault. Shows are really staple similar moves at Virgin Energy. Yes. Back in, like, when you're doing doubles, that's generally when you can opt for Heat Wave. Uh, no need to use Taunt. No need to use Taunt. Yeah, when when you do VGC, you generally do, like, some spread moves. And Charizard can either go Flamethrower or Heat Wave in VGC. Personally, I don't like Heat Wave unless a necessity calls for it. Purely down to I don't want it to miss. Um, what is your current Umbreon build? Because I do have some experience running a singles Umbreon. You generally run it as a brick wall. Do I save my fire moves or fire moves? You can use your fire type moves. We don't use fire moves against Latias. We don't use fire moves against Latias. Target me, please. Of course I targeted that one. Freaking heck. Yeah, again, we, we're using dark moves for Latias. We're not using fire moves on this. We use fire moves on this thing. What's stronger gym leader? What's the strongest one? Stronger gym leader, in my opinion, that would be... Raihan. Raihan. He is the only gym leader to actually have relatively advanced doubles tactics. Hello there, Trevor Taylor. How are you doing? Well, the reason why I would say Raihan is because he actually is a doubles trainer that uses doubles tactics to a pretty high degree of effectiveness. How you doing? Again, if you guys haven't done so already, don't forget to subscribe for more. And leave a like on the stream. Okay, good. Got the play, Raw. It's not really going to matter because, I mean... Sun boosted move is gonna demo this thing anyway. Gonna absolutely demolish this thing. Yeah. Alolan Marowak. One of the absolute best Pokemon in Dynamax Adventures. Hands down. Yeah, again. The funny thing is, that's an Alolan Marowak that doesn't even have a thick club. That is what Sun Boosted Max Move Fire Type Move does. And remember, Vika Volt is not frail. Vika Volt's actually pretty bulky. Like Vika, Vika Volt is, is a very bulky Pokemon when you really think about it. When you actually, when you actually look at the stats, actually, the very high defensive stats, very good. And that thing's and this thing has like what four or five times eight norm, normal HP. It's really good. Again, we switch out the Whimsicott. Switch out. Very good. Yeah, let's go. Ooh. We're, we're perfectly fine. Um, nothing else in this path is what we need, because the ghost type is a Sinisty. I uh, no, not Sinisty, Poltygeist. And Poltygeist does not have a ghost move. It only has Sucker Punch, which is not ideal. So, we do not need to pick up any additional Pokemon. Uh, it's funny you mentioned a shiny Vicavolt because in the shiny Pokemon giveaways, because we do a lot of shiny, we did a lot of shiny in Scarlet Violet. We have a lot of spare shinies. Uh, we have, I think, what is it like two or three members of the Grubbin family spare that are up for a shiny giveaway? We got a lot of them. All right, this is pretty good. 
Uh, go Flare Blitz again. Yeah, I, I have no reason to not just spam Flare Blitz with literally everything else. It, I take no recoil damage because of freaking Rockhead. Ah, make it all. Yeah, that's good. Then, again, no, no need to use status moves, Mr. Mash. When it comes to Dynamax Adventures, unless otherwise mentioned, just go for attacking moves. We are adamantly against Jenning. We are we are a very anti Jenning group here, Jest. Well, if you want a Dynamax, yeah. Yeah, we believe in doing everything 100% legit. That's the reason why we do ogre rousting shine. Uh, we do ogre rousting streams so we can get the fresh start mochi. Thank you. Yeah, I. For me, it is. I mean, one. It's not even just like, it, it's a part of the rules of when you agree to do competitive stuff is you sign off on the legitimacy of every Pokemon you use. It is a simple respect to the opponent. You know, if I'm going to go up against someone in battle, I spent time getting the team in game. You know, catching every individual Pokemon, breeding for every individual Pokemon, going out, getting the TM materials to teach every move to them, getting the egg moves, putting that work. And it is disrespectful, in my opinion, to just... You know, click a few keys, boop, PK hex, and print the thing out. You know, it just, it's, it, it, it is disrespectful to the opponent. Closest thing I'd say is playing Pixel Mine like a Gen Victini. Yep, it burnt. Yeah, I believe, um, Flare Blitz is a 30% burn chance? I think. Um, let me go check. I guess. I still haven't even looked over my favorite Alola Pokemon. Flare Blitz Pokemon. Yeah, I know Flare Blitz 120 base power. I think 33% recoil damage, but I don't remember what its burn odds are. Maybe... It's either 10% or it's 30%. I don't think it is 20. Um, No need to switch out. I mean, if the Bomb of Snow does want to switch out, they can. But no need otherwise. I mean, Avalanche still does a lot more damage. All right, yeah, physical fire, 120 base power, 15 power points. Yeah, the, the thing has a solid amount of power points for as good of a move as it is. Uh, overall, best thing to go fight would be Sinisty. Uh, not Sinisty, uh, Poltegeist, because it's an easy takedown. And it really can't do any damage to any of us. Because, like, what? Like, Psy Shock does nothing to uh, Thievul. It does barely any damage to me. Giga Drain does nothing to me. Giga Drain does nothing to Thievul. Giga Drain does nothing to Obama Snow. Yeah, there's really no reason for us to go for anything other than that. Um, just use physical moves. 10% chance of burning. Okay, so 10% chance. Uh, just use physical moves, like use a uh, foul play on the Thievul. Because this thing has weak armor, and the faster we debilitate this thing's physical defense, the more damage it takes every single time we hit it. <laughs> I love some of these abilities like that. Ooh, okay, that means um that means I Dynamax first against Latias. Good. That's perfect. Which is which is actually what I was hoping for because I can use a dark move to absolute a ghost would absolutely just decapitate its defense. Which means you guys can gang up on that defense. Which is good. Oh, I love that damage. It's so frail. It's so frail. Oh, let's have a look at the Alola Pokemon so I can see which of my favorite Alola Pokemon is. Vikavolt probably is on that list. Lycanroc on that list. Golisopod on that list. Pelsan, I mean Pelsan's not on that list. Minior. 
Mikio. Yeah. There's a lot of really great Alola Pokemon. I'd have a very hard time picking what my favorite would be. Oh, I forgot that they had Spark. Weak armor. God, it just does no damage. It's so frail. It's so frail. And then you go down from the burn, from the flare blitz. Um, no. Not each person... Not each person Dynamax wants. Um, okay, I think... Oh, uh, what do you mean, Dustin, about struggling to find a Draft League animation? Def the defense just don't... The defense no longer exists. It was minus three by the time I hit it. Yes, Sunkern's a Sunstone evolution. When, when is your Godzilla thing in the back of the phone? Uh, this... You mean, like, what movie is it from? Um, that is Final Wars Godzilla, which is from Godzilla against Mechagodzilla, Godzilla Tokyo SOS, and Godzilla Final Wars. Which, even though those movies exist in different timelines for some of them. Ah, uh, what year movie? Okay. Um... Okay, wait, well, the suit was in three different movies, but, again, Godzilla against Mechagodzilla 2002, Godzilla Tokyo SOS 2003, and Godzilla Final War, it was 2004. Made a team draft animation a few weeks ago. With his... Ah. Um, do you remember, like, do you know what editing software you made it in? Because generally, whenever I try to find an anim, I try to find like a project I worked on, but I can't find the file it's in, I go into my editing software, and I go to the specific project I was working on, like the, the the file, in like the big browse of recents, and then I click OK, save to, and that generally highlights what folder it's in. Um, I don't know if that same thing would work though. Made it in. Never use that, so I have no clue how that works. So I may not be able to assist too well with that. Yeah, I actually have uh, two of those movies, Godzilla Tokyo SOS and Godzilla against Mechagodzilla. I, I love how every time there was a Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla movie, they just changed the name of it. So the first one was Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla. Then it was Terror of Mechagodzilla. Then Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla 2. Even though canonically in that timeline, it was the only Mecha Godzilla in that timeline. It was just for branding reasons, because again, it was the second incarnation of Mecha Godzilla uh, by Toho. And then there was Godzilla against Mecha Godzilla. And then Godzilla Tokyo SOS. <laughs> ah. God, I love those movies. Oh, 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 yes, please, please, yes, please. You turn into a thing weak to fire. This is delightful. That's delightful, it turned into V of old typing. It's minus one defense, and it's weak to fire. They're supposed to discord. They're the share, but it's up so far. Um, Dustin, I recommend doing search from user, search, you know, from yourself. And if you remember what channel it was in, you can do, you know, search from user in channel blank, and that could bring you up to it. So that, that is a generally, hey, thank you very much, whoever subscribed. Uh, that's generally a way that I find messages that I don't know. I, that's how I find messages that I know exist somewhere, but I don't know where they exist. Yeah. There's all kinds of like little, that's how I find a bunch of, that's how I find memes I've posted in various discords that I don't have saved on my PC. Thank you very much, um, JSE. I have no idea how to pronounce that name of VR. Welcome in. Thank you very much for that. It was I who subscribed. We do like JoJo's Bizarre Adventures here. That's entirely fine. Use, use that purge. I'm still going to hit you with a sun boosted fire move. It's not going to matter that, you know, you're, you're, you're not going to survive. You're not going to want to take this hit anyway. 
You're not going to want to take that hit anyway. Buzz, buzz. This is excessive. And I don't care. 234 Dynamax Adventure checks for Latias, and she still is not shining. Maybe this will be the one. How do I look my own post? Um, look for, uh, search, uh, type in from colon use, uh, from colon, and then your name on the Discord. That'll bring up a post from you. Um, hello there, Keegan. Favorite Gen 1 Pokemon, that is Zapdos. Hello there, Nico and Elzer, how you doing? You're big fans of Zapdos here. You know that thing game-ended me in uh, one of my draft leagues. I, I show no malice towards Zapdos. It was only doing what it does best. Nope, no shiny. She, she, she's making me go almost double and a half odds. Again, she, she's not nearly as bad as Cartana. And not nearly anywhere near as bad as Ho-Oh. But uh, she, she's making me work for it. I'm good. I'm doing well. Hello there, Dark. How you been? Welcome back. Let's go again for Latias. If you were in the last D8, please wait a minute before, uh, wait a minute 30 seconds before joining in. Um, Jest, are you still here? Hello there, Foxy. Welcome in. Uh, what is the question? What is the question? Link code 192837461. You want to join? Feel free to join. We're playing Pokemon Sword version. We're playing the Crown Tundra DLC with Dynamax Adventures. No, the mythical is not in the poll. Yeah, there's a lot of mythicals. There was no way to put all of them in the poll because there's like 20 plus mythicals and there's only four slots. There, there, there was not enough space for every single mythical because there are so many of them. Uh, just do Dynamax Adventures until you get lucky with a Mewtwo pathing. Oh, uh, yeah, you can join. That's the reason we do Dynamax Adventures with viewers. It's to get you guys to pop in. Because Dynamax Adventure shiny hunting is the least effective method of shiny hunting for for Pokemon. But it is the most enjoyable because you get to do it with other people. Like, if you just did soft resets back in Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon, it's actually a lot faster. It's like five, probably five to, t f five to ten times faster. Why do you do that? Uh, yeah, you have to get a raid. Yes, it is. You have to do that. Zuzu is the best. He cannot lose. Get a raid. Yes. Yeah, the, I didn't put Mew on the list because I knew Mew would have basically won no matter what. Because like, people would always go, oh, Mew. Go click Mew. It, like, it, it wouldn't have even been a contest. Yes, it is 1 in 100 odds of getting a shiny in this. The thing is... It is because of how long the Dynamax adventures take. A Dynamax adventure, when you do it solo, Dynamax adventures are significantly faster. But if you go online with a group of people, it is much slower. I mean, it, it's still slower to do Dynamax adventures solo with animations off than it is to shiny hunt for them back with soft resets back in Ultra and Ultra Moon. It's just a lot more monotonous to do that back in Ultra and Ultra Moon. Hello there, Chuck Belton. How you doing? Is it weird that I don't actually like you? No, not particularly, Wilkins. I'm not the biggest fan of it either. But yeah, no, it's... It is overall a lot faster to do soft resets. There's a good path in solo... No, it's because of how many times it has to do things. Uh, I've clocked times for things. I did solo animations off Kartana hunting, which is the fastest Dynamax adventure boss to fight. I did any. I did about 400 DAs. It was anywhere between 370 and 430 DAs in three days and that was basically three days you know all day i was doing that and that was um off 
recording. I didn't do that, you know, live. Uh, none of these are particularly good. Altari and Warthog are the least bad. And I did those, like, solo off-screen. And that was about four times odds for the easiest Dynamax adventure thing to fight. The, the big legendaries are a lot harder. Because Kartana, if you have a special attack... And you have a fire, if you have a special attack or a fire attack, it just goes down. Like, you can easily one-shot Kartana. But things like, say, Ho-Oh, Lugia, even Latias, those things do not go down like one or two hits. And in Ultra Moon, okay, we're going... We're going to go to the Luxray, then we're going to go to the Comfe, and then we're going to go for the Auroras. Um, can't let me switch to a good music for Umbreon. I'll just join some other time. I guess I'll do it. Thank you very much, Jest. Um, if you want to join off screen, uh, you can just join the Discord and we can set one up off screen. Uh, for some reason, it won't let me enter the DLC areas, even though I thought it on release date. Did Did you get it for sword or shield, and you're playing the opposite version? Man, yeah, no, it is. It's a lot better to basically do Dynamax. It's a lot better to do uh, solo resets back in uh, Ultra Ultra Moon because we did shiny hunting for Zapdos back in Ultra Moon, and it took us about four streams, which were each about three hours long. Actually, a bit less than three hours total. So in about you know, 11, 11 and a half hours, we got to a little under odds. And that was, you know, a, a significant portion of that first room was actually us just doing the Ultra Space uh, portals to find the Zapdos pathing. Once we found it, it was like, like an hour later. So again, about that, about 10 hours to hit odds. Again, about. But with Dynamax Adventures, you can do about that only for something like Kartana. If you're doing something like Dialga, uh, Ho-Oh, Lugia, Groudon, Zygarde, Giratina, the big, big legendaries, there's a very significant chance you lose. And then that means, you know, any time you spent on that path thing is just completely wiped away. Yeah, okay, that's why. So, yes, if you bought it for... Yeah, I mean, you may have traded over the Cub Fu to you uh, from your other version through Pokemon Home. So, that that could be why. I want to shine on Pokemon, but which Pokemon should I do? I am I am a horrible thing or for, like, picking one. For me, it was Dynamaxing, but I don't really like any of the super mechanics. I would rather a game where there's no super mechanics. I, I would love to go back to, like, the Generation 5 systems where no super mechanics, just battle. Interesting. Maybe you had someone trade one to you. But, you know, if you have Pokemon Sword and your version, if your Sword version is the one that has the DLC, you need to be playing your Sword version in order to get access to the DLC areas. I mean, I'd say, you know, like the, the, the Gen 5, uh, not the Gen 5, the Generation uh, generation 6 fossils. I mean, I love both those fossils, shinies. Oh, no, 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 okay. That, yeah, I mean, you can join, D you can do Dynamax Adventures without Switch Online. It's just you have to solo. There's new about Pokemon Moon, and the save had an Ash for Ninja. Nice. Yeah, I, I do like the Z-moves. The thing is, the Z moves outside the realm of including Mega Evolutions, they become problematic. Because Z moves entirely exist to counter Megas. It was so Pokemon that were bulky enough to survive a hit from a Mega were able to have enough power to hit Megas back. Because, again, if something had the bulk to survive a hit from Mega Evolution, they didn't have 
the, the power to knock one out, but they needed a Z-move to give them a kick in power to take out the Mega Evolutions. You know, it's it it's kind of the the answer to a problem is itself its own problem, but with the other thing in play, it isn't a problem as as much again it was a problem just not as heavily but if you take out that first thing then the other thing becomes a bigger issue yeah he's talking about zenos again that's kind of the reason why i'm i'm largely of the opinion no super mechanics yes the first gimmick was megas you know, the most tame super mechanic is terastalizing, but even then, that is tame in relative terms. I bought it because I was using the same delayed, the same levels, plus I haven't beaten sort of not able to access it. Uh, um, open your menu. If there's a little thing at the bottom of the thing that says, like, you know, purchase DLC pass, then you should have it. That's strange. It went Mega Zenith, Dynamax, Terathalyze, technically, there was a strong handle style between Dynamax and Terathalyze. Yeah, but that's not really a super mechanic. Those were things that did actively have penalties. You know, those... those there, there was a cost to using it. I mean, if you use an Agile-style move, it actually decreased the overall power of the attack. Um, that's strange. You should be able to access the area. Games I didn't suffer trying to comprehend the Megas were brutal. Also, Roost Megas are brought back, and let's go. Yeah, but the thing is, uh, Let's Go's way of bringing them back removed the abilities. Which was a fairly significant difference. Yes, that that is true. That was a gimmick. That's why I said specifically super mechanics. If we get a Mega Zygarde the next game. I mean, Mega Zygarde is basically Zygarde complete form. I don't quite think we're gonna get a Mega Zygarde. Let's go, but I'm not including Megas in the returning timeline. We go to the train station and no stations for the DLC areas. Show. Remember, you need to like scroll to the bottom of the map. Um I'm I'm not really sure what is going wrong because I've never encountered that problem. Yeah, I mean, you should be able to fly down there then. I mean, if not, I guess maybe go to the, the train station in um, out right outside of like the wild area and then like see if you can hop on the train down there. That's very strange. That's very strange. Thank you very much, whoever subscribed. Oh. Did you migrate over all of your game data? Because that might be why. Um, uh, Mr. Mash, are you? Are you, uh, Mr. Mash? Are you still in play? How uh, far into the game? Hello there, Ethan. Welcome in. I've done nine feet Dynamax adventures and didn't even get one shiny. That is, um, that is still a bit under odds. Have you, have you gotten the shiny charm? Have you gotten the shiny charm? Because if you don't have the shiny charm, your odds are 1 in 300. Um, how far away from allowing the extra DLC areas? Hello there, Levy Jetson. Welcome in. Yeah, I'd recommend going to the, um, the, the station and seeing if you can do that. Um, there may be a way of getting the ID in. That's that's very strange. I have never encountered anything like that. Okay, it's okay. Um, Mr. Mash, switch out the switch out the Altaria for the Comfey. 
The other team is Charizard Umbreon, Manectric Garchomp, Gyarados, Starmie. It's like Levi. Alright, um... That's right. I've never encountered that problem with the games. See, that that's one of the reasons I am absolutely petrified of getting a new Switch and, like, migrating everything over is, like, something like that will happen. Yeah, there, there should be a way to get it back. I mean, I guess, like, contact Nintendo support. I, I guess, like, see if you can go contact... Nintendo support and see if there's something that they would be able to do because I've never wow I guess maybe like Game Freak support then I have no clue that's I'm gonna need to look into that for when I get a new switch then I'm gonna need to look into that I'm trying to get Latios and DA isn't it also takes long yeah I mean, Athena had some issues with Shiny Hunting Latios as well, so. You know, it's, uh, the Latias do indeed not want to sparkle. The Latias do not want to sparkle. And transfer the DS to the switch. Wow, that's very strange. I have never had that problem. Interesting. Interesting. That's very worrisome. Yeah, but again, it's Nintendo transfers of how many Shinies did you get? In the course of what shiny hunt? Because I, I've I've quite literally done thousands of Dynamax adventures. I've I've done thousands of Dynamax adventures. Again, if you guys haven't done so already, don't forget to subscribe for more. Leave a like on the stream. In this hunt. I actually don't remember how many we've gotten so far. Again, Mr. Mash, switch out the Altaria for this. Go, that's good. Well now, Ho oh was well Ho oh was almost 700 checks. Go for the Auroras. Yeah, Ho-Oh was 700 checks, more or less. But in total, considering lost DAs, it probably was well over 1,000. Got Shiny Mewtwo and Mess Ball. Nice. She has Shalanias. Love the color. Well, no, not exactly. Because, again, 700 just for Ho-Oh. And a lot of those I did solo. And a lot of those I did end up losing. So even if I have, you know, what, like a 60% win, like 67 or 70% win rate against Ho-Oh, that's still about 300 lost matches. Yeah. All right. Um, switch out War Turtle for the Auroras. You know, I mean, it's, it's realistically plausible we did have that many. And I don't know because I didn't actually track all of them. Sleep drive. Go get some rest, Roos. Go sleep. Go sleep, chicken man. Energy ball. Max, here we go. Well, that's that's oh well he he refuses Bruce refuses okay that's a little bit of a problem well then it is 10 10 p.m. are you in um you in Spain or England with that time uh, time difference oh right Orosphere does it I think actually like um. Yeah, no, no, our sphere would do more damage. British? Exactly. If I use this, sleep powder. Rule sleep. Mash, what have we said about the joke? The UK, okay, yeah, I had a feeling it was that. Yeah, good thing that, uh, grassy terrain's in effect, so we get a little bit of healing back. Well, 
Oh. I do not get a damage boost from the grassy terrain, unfortunately, because I'm levitate. Okay, good, you got the man. So again, switch out the War Turtle for the Aurorus. And then we Dynamax the Aurorus, turn one. Rough day today, bug bit me two times, tripped my head on stone. That is not a good thing. Recommend going to the hospital about the head hit. That is not good. That, uh, that could be very dangerous. Uh, not fearing roost is very dangerous for your health. Not not fearing roost is very, very dangerous for one's health. Uh, but this is good. We have a good we have the best option against Latias right now with that. <laughs> roost, this is why we say go rest. You can't type correctly. You're very not good at spelling. Exactly. Longest shiny hunt. Indeed. My longest shiny hunt was the Dynamax Adventure Ho-Ho Hunt. That was a year and a half long shiny hunt that went seven times over odds. In terms of absolute longest shiny hunt, which is the most over odds a shiny hunt went, that would be my shiny Charcadet hunt, where that went significantly over 11 times odds. But that was a picnic soft reset hunt. So, that was with sandwiches back in Scarlet Violet. So, in reality, that was only about eight or nine hours. Yes, Dynamax the Auroras. My biggest fear are truth serums and plungers. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, I know that's. Meander to see him or something. Else. Yeah, yeah, I don't doubt that roast. I, I, I do not doubt that under any circumstances. Oh, my head is a... Yeah, I'd recommend going to the hospital over something like that because that's not good. You might you might want to get that looked at. Again, if you haven't done so already, don't forget to subscribe for more. And leave a like on the stream. Good, Latias is now asleep. Oh, wow, actually, NPC bot was smart in using uh, Worry Seed. Actually, kind of smart. Oh, wait, no, it got rid of the sleep. I take back everything I said about the bots being smart. That just died. That's not good. That is that is that is not good. Um, generally, I might want to unplug and plug the internet back in and see if that'll work. Uh, I'm probably gonna go down here. Oh wait, NBC bot is gonna have weather ball ice now. Okay, good reaction. That's good. Bots. Again, the bots are deliberately programmed to be stupid. They are deliberately programmed to be dumb. I'm. Okay, this is a little bit of a slight problem. Because Psychic Terrain is now in effect. Uh, you cannot use Draining Kiss anymore. Okay, uh, use Floor Healing on me if I'm still alive at the end of the turn. Because you're not going to be able to use Draining Kiss. It's a priority move and Psychic Terrain shuts down priority moves. You ain't American to play sucker. I mean... It, they're both correct. Soccer and football are both correct terms for it. Oh boy. Oh boy. Hopefully we don't lose. Yes, it blocks priority move used against opponents. It's weird. Cool, the British. There are many several. There are several other British. There are other British. Well, that's not good. Well, that's not terrible. That's that's not horrible. We can we're we're, we're okay with this. This is not terrible. Bad. I'm gonna do 20 more magic card, but then I'm going. Okay, go rest. One HP. How did you survive? 
Um, pure sheer grit. That's how we survived. Pure sheer grit. Now that that is a valid cap time. I, th I think we have a chance against this thing and just go body slam. I, th I think that I think that we're fine with this one. I think we I think we we win. I think we win this. I mean, you can go energy ball against those things. You actually attack now because it's it's not. Super resistant to grass. It's actually neutrally damaged by grass now. Okay, we're good. We win. Oh, oh, even better. E even better. This is perfect. Well, I'm gone. Oh. No draining kiss is priority, Levi. Uh, Comfe's ability is triage. It makes all drain. It makes all healing moves priority moves. So when when used by Comfey, it is a priority move. Two hundred thirty-five DAs. Yes, we did win. We did win again. If you guys haven't done so already, please don't forget to subscribe for more. Leave a like and let us know how your day's been. Yeah, I I know most of these Pokemon's abilities relatively by heart from how many DIs I've done. Let's go track summary. Thank you very much for having subscribed. The triage gives priority to healing moves. Yeah, it, that includes draining moves and moves that heal allies. No shiny Auroras, no shiny Latias. Well, hope we can make the day better, JS, uh, JSR. Hope we can make it better. Yeah, I, again, I've done well in the thousands of Dynamax adventures, so I know these abilities pretty in and out. Hey, Chimchar, how you doing? Thank you very much for that. Uh, what were you doing today, Chimchar? Well, let's go to I have not played Power World, so I have no thoughts to give. Yeah, I, I have no, I have not played it, so I don't really think I can make any statements on it. Alright, code is live if anybody wants to pop in. Hopefully the day will get better. One of the things we do this is to help people get better. But I said this one out, gonna want gonna watch. Thank you very much, Mr. Mash. Thank you very much. YouTube screws me up and tech was being dick. I understand that entirely. Technology. It's supposed to make our lives easier. I have my doubts. Just like my uh just like the AI, I have my doubts AI is intelligent. I've hunted so many animals for sport in the game before it immediately... I mean, I feel like Power World is, is still going. Like, there's still an active community for Power World. It's just the the fever for the game is not at the same pitch it used to be. Power World is dark. Is a target. Not really. Not really dark. Fundamentally, the two games are very different. In Pokemon, the, the job quote-unquote, is to fill out the Pokedex and catch everything. You're supposed... That's, like, your task necessity. Whereas, like, with Pal World, from what I've heard from my friend Echo mentioning, it is the Pals are more or less a resource, and it is for optimization purposes that it's encouraged to go and catch things. Which, again, even though they're both creature catchers, fundamentally the reasons for doing what is done are very different. Halo Reach, would say Halo Reach itself is a game. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that the game is, is dead. I still think this is a pretty, again, it's the size of the community. That was the AI Pokemon. No, no, AI in general is incredibly smooth-brained. AI, AI in general, I say, is, is, is stupid. Actually, those accusations of the Pokemon, of it being copied, were actually just made up. They actually, it was compl completely untrue. The person who, like, started the copy rumors admitted they made it up because they were mad Pal World was doing well. Yeah. The, the, the person who started the whole rumors 
said they made it all up because they were mad the game was doing well. Yeah, it it's more built off of Ark than it is built off of that, ooh, we're going to the right, we're going to go, to, uh, not right, we're going to go to the left, we're going to go for the, uh, Thievul, and then we're going to go for the Crawdon. Yeah. They, they admitted they made it all up because they were mad the game was doing well. Or that people were actually, like, they, they were mad that the game was, like, popular. Your messages have been deleted to the last of the Martyr Drive. The model version is similar possibly referenced, but proven they weren't copied. Well, the, here's the thing. When it comes to making an animal based off of something, like, there, there's only so many ways you can have, like, a snake look that won't look similar. It's it's inevitable. Um, I have Shining Necrozma in my shield version, not in my sword version. So we will be able to shiny hunt Necrozma. Hello there, Sam. Did well? How you doing? My pals are actually really cute, but I can tell what Pokemon they hybrid to make them. Well, again, there's only so many ways you can make a monster version of an animal. Like, there's only so many ways you can basically make a snake. There's only so many ways you can make a fox or a jackal. It just, there's, there are so many, there's only so many ways to make that. Where, yes, things will inevitably look similar because they're based on the same thing. Again, it is the same reasoning as what you're saying, you know, if you say Pokemon was it if you say like fossil fighters copy Pokemon, it's like they really didn't. It just fundamentally there's only so many different ways a game like that can exist before there will inevitably be commonalities. Yeah, we're gonna be shiny hunting those eventually as well. They are on our eventual list of hunts. When you're making exactly, Rose. There's only so many ways you can actually have them be different. And then it just got frozen. That's funny. That's funny. Ah, I love that. So if I were over it. I like Scarlet and Violet. I think that they're properly rated. I think they're overhated, but I think that they are properly rated. Again, if you guys haven't done so already, don't forget to subscribe for more. Said I was doing magic cards. Only found eight so far. Yeah. I think that the game is I think the game is like properly rated to slightly underrated, but the game is very much overhated. Uh memberships are in the description. Uh for that. Um, again, I, I, I think that it is possible to be overrated and overhated at the same time. I think those possible to be underrated and overhated at the same time, like BDSP. I mean, to the downside, if it is popular, it might even go to competition against Pokemon. The thing is, fundamentally, Pokemon as a franchise doesn't have any competition. But I do agree with you on that. Uh, switch out, yes, there we go, switch out the, uh, that for that. Strange. Strange. Go for the Crawdont. People say it was overrated, they didn't play it the full point. Yeah. Like again, this is kind this kind of goes into a bit of a, a problem with gaming as a whole these days. Is preconceived opinions about a game before it even launches is is gonna be how the game is gonna be received. You know, there is the game itself is entirely unable to change the way people feel about a game when they have felt that way for months leading up to its release. You know, if you had people from the first time they saw Scarlet Violet's trailer, they were thinking, this game is bad, and I don't like this game. Nothing can be released. Nothing can be done in that game 
that will dissuade them from feeling the way they do. You know, it's it's the reason why it took over a decade for the community to change its views on Generation 5. The only way for those notions to basically be rooted out and, you know, changed is the, the old guard needs to basically be uprooted and a, a new generation of fans needs to come in and fill that vacuum. Yeah, again, it's... You can tell about uh, the point of shining at the team. The thing is, Legends Arceus did far more to that thing of shining hunting than anything. If anything, it's actually harder to find shine. It's, well, not harder. If anything, it actually is a lot more time-consuming to find shinies in Skull of Iron than it is in Legends Arceus. Because in Legends Arceus, there's a little audio cue and a little glowing sparkly aura. Meow. Le Legends Arceus did much more damage to Shiny Hunting's ability than Scarlet Violet did. However, it actually kind of goes into something about Legend Arceus itself, that Legends Arceus is new toy syndrome. It is, that is a game that even to this day, people will never criticize in large capacity, because that game is held up as the golden standard, even though the game has several fundamental issues, which kind of, again, goes in the same thing. People thought Legends Arceus was the greatest thing in the world even before it released. So even after it released and there were these massive problems in it, people were not going to criticize it because they've been telling themselves for months, this is the greatest game in the world. Again, that is uh, Zelda being better than Pokemon and Skull of Out. That is simply one's opinion. Like, I don't care for Pokemon X and Y, but I know there's a lot of people who do like it. We all like what we like for the reasons we like it. There is no definitive better or worse. Imagine if the next new living was Steel type. Ah, I really have no thoughts here or there on the next one being Steel type. Uh, but why do people hate on Generation 5 so much? That is a very, very interesting and very petty reasoning. Basically, it comes down to when Generation 5 released... People believed there were no old Pokemon in the game, period. So basically, all old Pokemon were gone. They didn't like you had to use the new Pokemon. And they basically were forcefully fed all of the Pokemon were just copies of Gen 1 Pokemon, which is decidedly not true. And it is basically this continuing feeding of Gen 5 is bad for blah 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 reasons which are again demonstrably untrue out of sheer pettiness because in a lot of ways Gen 5 did the ideas of Pokemon better than any of the previous gens did switch out Slowking for this you know again it, it basically comes down to pure pettiness like it, it comes down to Gen 5 did what Gen 1 couldn't, and people do not like that. Uh, we'll go for the Leyron. Yeah, keep the Palace Wine. When people think Gen 5 is a complete copy of Gen 1, people said the story sucked, it's too linear. And last minute game, then the DS. Is... Yeah, again, the reasons why Generation 5 was, was generally disliked are very, very minimal. Again, it's again it's pettiness, really largely. I'd like Gen 5. Yeah, again, it's basically people were mad Generation 5 was good. My favorite gen is Generation 5. You look again, this is basically the thing that shows Gen 5 was a very good generation, even gens out. It is a widely held belief within the community these days that Gen 5 is the best gen. After, for a decade, the community's top shelf actively attempted to suppress anything positive about Gen 5, and even Pokemon Company themselves suppressing Gen 5.
That is a statement of how high in quality something is when the controllers of the community and the makers of the gaming games themselves are actively suppressing a part of that series, that part of the series still becomes the vocally most popular part of it. And that is impressive. Uh, but what is considered Generation 5 is Black, White, Black 2, White 2. For the mainline games. Which makes no sense to me. If you like the franchise. Exactly! Exactly. Where is it? Yeah, again, that's the reason I believe in you. Know, you give credit where credit is due, and you give criticism where criticism is due. You can criticize something you like, and you can like things about something you dislike. You know, again, it's only the Sith deal in absolutes. JSR, please chill with the caps. That's one rule we have. Chill with the caps. Like, I love the Godzilla movies. I will criticize them until the end of the Earth. But I love them. You know, I, I absolutely detest certain other movies. But there's things I can enjoy. Like, I don't, I do not like the Star Wars sequel trilogy. But there's things about it I can enjoy. What do people think of it? Gen 7's made a comeback in recent years. It was not very heavily liked at the start. It was actually very heavily disliked at the start. But as time has gone on, its opinions generally improved. Which, granted, that's the status of basically all Pokemon games ever since Gen 7, aside from Legends Arceus, that they've been very poorly received at the start. And then, you know, wait like two years, like, hey, that thing's actually pretty good. And mechanisms of people's mind aren't enigma. Yeah, basically. That's Greggy. Why would anyone hate it? I mean, I, I, I like Gen 7, personally. But again, as time's gone on, people have begun to like Generation 7 a lot more. This is the interesting thing about the games. Basically go two gens out, and that's when the opinion on that game is largely going to go from negative to positive. Yes, I did understand that, that reference. I did understand the reference. Yeah, every time this thing freaking uses Dragon Breath, it always paralyzes. Every time. Again, it's rigged. It's freaking rigged. I'm gonna go for Shadow Claw. Rigged. Hello there, um, Sir Fernando. I think it's a pattern. Gen 5 was widely beloved, and even Gen 3 was... Yeah, exactly. It's... I'd argue you, you're critical of something. Exactly, Jess! That's my entire thing the same way. It's like, I believe you would be most critical of the things you like the most because you want it to be the best possible version it can be. But yeah, exactly, Fernando. Like, it's a, a pattern I've noticed of every two generations, the opinion on something changes. You know, Generation 5 did not begin to get more popular until well into Gen 7. Now, Generation 6 didn't really have the same thing because it was already incredibly well-received at the start, specifically because of Mega Evolutions, which is why it is an entire anomaly. But Alola, with Generation 9 happening, people have begun to like Alola a lot more, and we are starting to see this exact process in action with Gen 8. The discourse around Sword and Shield and even BDSP is becoming a lot more positive than it used to be. So, we, we are literally seeing this hypothesis of every two gens, the overall standing of a generation improves in action. Again, Generation 4 and Generation 6 were like the two ones where this really doesn't apply to because those were incredibly well received at the start. And we've actually been noticing the inverse with actually Legends Arceus where 
It's taken a while, but people are now actually starting to look much more critically at Legends Arceus because of Scarlet Violet. And it's like, maybe Legends Arceus wasn't always cracked up to be. I was always skeptical about the new Pokemon games, but I play them, I love... Again, it is perfectly fine to be skeptical about a new game. That is perfectly fine. However, what is not fine is to be malicious in this game is going to be bad in the active attempt to ruin the view of that game in other people's eyes. Assassin's Creed for good decade. Everyone hated Odyssey. But then Valhalla comes out, everyone actually saw about this. Yeah. Again, it's it's that's just how things are. Like when the new thing comes out, the old thing gets better. Because then it's these, oh, well, people are, are saying the good thing about it. I don't like the old one. Hello there, Omar. Yeah, there's a there's a, again. People are now starting to actually look at Legends Arceus a bit more critically. And I think I think it's less people well, okay, I don't think it actually is people are starting to look at the game much more critically. I think people always had those views on Legends Arceus. It's just that before it was not fashionable to say criticisms about the game because you would get blasted if you criticize Legends Arceus. Like, you were basically, again, it was basically talking negatively about Legends of Arceus when it released, was the same as basically talking positive about Generation 5 when it came out. You were laughed out of the community. You know, it was like, oh, you're saying good things about Gen 5, your opinion is invalid. Oh, you're saying bad things about Legends of Arceus, your opinion is invalid. That's basically how it went. But now, the new toy syndrome has worn off, and... People are able to more freely talk about Generation 8.5 with Legends Arceus and, like, you know, actually criticize it. None of these are good. So we're going to need to make some changes as time goes on. Ooh, go for the Shinotic. Yeah, not much. Exactly. You know, again, it, it's, it's okay to be skeptical. Ooh, Sneasel, very good. Yeah, it's perfectly okay to be skeptical about a new piece of media you like coming out. That is perfectly fine. The, the, the not fine thing is the active, this game is going to be bad and you're a bad person. For like, remember, before Sword and Shield came out, there were legitimate entries of people going out and harassing people over the game and saying, if you support this game, you are a bad person or you are a terrible person if you want to play Sword and Shield. Yes, that was a thing that happened. All right, we go Stunfisk, then we go Sneasel. Not Sneasel, um, Morpico. And then we go Haunter. You get stuck in a cliff and spaz as a whisper in game. How dare you use Yeah, exactly. That's literally what it is, Temper. That, was, that is literally what it is. People do not know the difference. Do know that. Exactly. He's like, exactly, Jess. It is people do not understand people have just different things that they like about media. Like, they they do not understand that. Haunter is weak to Psychic, but at the very least, Haunter can at least do damage. I don't disagree. I do not disagree. But it is a lot better to have a Haunter than it is to have something like a Quagsire, which can't really do any damage. And Max Flayer. What have we said about the caps before? What have we said about the caps, JSR? This is your last warning. Play Sword and Shield last year without any expectations are pretty good. The Dagon is kind of weird, but Hop is just great. Yeah, again, everyone has their own preference. Like, I personally don't care for Hop all that much. I like Sword and Shield. But I don't really care much for Hop. Yes, keep the I, That Sneasel is very, very good. Sneasel is, is very, very good. Again, as as I said, I like Nimona. I very much like Nimona. Yeah, my only... Like, th this is my thing on games is that well i mean media in general 
you like what you like for the reasons you do. There's no shame in liking what you do. Because, again, everyone likes what they like for different reasons. You know, it's... We really shouldn't be haranguing one another about the media we enjoy because we all like different things. That's the beauty of, you know, individuality. It would be kind of boring if everyone liked the same things. The Mona's a bunch of personality is enjoyable. Well, I mean, I'm going to be switching out anyway. So, I'm probably, I was actually probably going to switch out the Charmeleon for the Stun Fist just so we can have an easier time against the Morpeko. I like Nimona's personality. And I like Nimona's personality for two reasons. One, I've been on the receiving end of that kind of a rivalry, and I've been on the giving end of that kind of rivalry. So as a person who it does competitive, I really like that. Yeah, I'm going to be switching out the Charmeleon for the Stun Fisk anyway, so that doesn't matter that I'm low on HP opinion. There's no... Exactly, there is no best gen objectively. That is entirely accurate. These are the... Kieran, I don't care much for him. Like, I liked Kieran at the start. I thought he was a bit off-putting towards the beginning, because, you know, way too overly attached to um, Ogre Pond. But he's a very well-done character. But for me, him uh, outright being a dick to his friends at Indigo Disc uh, Academy, at Blueberry Academy, that for me is a hard line of... You don't be a dick to your friends. That is a that is a hard red line for me. I like Car um I like Carmine. She amuses me. Yeah, Carmine and boy person. <laughs> boy. Yeah, uh, Kieran. Yeah, well done character. I just don't like the way that they do with his character because he becomes a dick to his friends. Again, for me, is a that is a red line you don't cross. Like, you, you do not deliberately be a dick to your friends. Uh, okay, so we can either go for the Al- Actually, no, we go for the Alchemy. We go for the Alchemy, now that I think about it. So go to the Electabuzz, and then we go for Fairy-type. That's not the point, though, is, like, disliking a villain because... The thing is... It's different when they're trying to make him a protagonist. When you're deliberately trying to make someone an antagonist and a villain, you can enjoy a villain who does evil things because they do bad stuff. Like, it's their whole thing. That's the way we love Loki. But they try to paint Kieran in a positive light throughout a lot of the things, and it's like, you're, you're trying to have this character be, like, one of the good guys, but you're having him just be very unlikable. You know, like, the way I think about it is this. If there was someone who did, in real life, to you and your friends what Kieran did to the people at Blueberry Academy, would you want to be around them? You know, if, if Kieran started being, if someone like, you know, Kieran started being addicted to me, he's like, I'm, you're gone. I'm cutting off from you because I've done that to people. I knew people like that. And it's like, I don't care what your reasoning is. You do not be a dick to your friends. And then you do not get, like, to attempt, like, to make up. That is going to take time to earn that trust back. Yeah, he didn't do evil, but he still was a dick to people. You know, he was... See, I, I would have been entirely okay with it if it turned out that, um... Uh... Patron was actually mind-controlling him the entire time, and that's why he was a dick to people. I would have entirely been okay with that. And, like, you know what? All's forgiven. You were being mind-controlled by Evil Peach Monster. It wasn't him doing what he does. It was just, you know, exploiting a little bit of, you know, insecurities. But, no, that was all him. And I, I think that's kind of the thing, is he was doing that on his own. I mean, Gezzas didn't kill anyone. 
He tries to, but he doesn't actually go that far. Yeah, I... Did they always paint him in a... No, I mean, they... They do try to paint him in a positive thing. They do try to paint him very positively. I'll switch that. Um... Well, we want to keep the Sneasel. That's the thing. We want to keep the Sneasel. Alright. I'm pretty sure I'm on the lady. Just, just refresh the page. Just refresh the stream. My just forgive Kieran. Didn't go twice. That's okay though. Oops. Yeah, again, like for me, it is when you be a dick to your friends. That's not forgiveness that happens immediately. That is something you need to earn back. I won't judge him. I'm just by his intended role. Again, his intended role is still be seen in a positive light towards the end. We come in the play light. Well, I mean, you didn't really lie to him. It was Carmine that basically made the, you know, interruption before you could say anything. But yes, I do see what you mean on that. Yeah, Carmine basically does interrupt before things can go there. And yeah, Carmine owns up to it. Like, yeah, no, we, I screwed up. Which, well, I mean, what Carmine did wasn't nearly as bad as getting what Kieran did. He basically turned the entirety of the class into his own personal punching bag. Have a good night, Jazz. I mean, the end of the redemption thing, he realizes. Yes. But the, the faults he did were still very... very large. You know, that that was... Because like, if you go into, like, the Blueberry Canyon, like, the, the, the area, like, the, 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 the terrarium... After you do the Indigo Disc story, you can see the little, like, text bubble pop from everyone. There is relief, like, you know, we can, we can enjoy battling again. So, this was one that affected the entirety of the place. You know, it really, it wasn't just, you know, a small thing. Like, this one that, in context, like, was prolonged for, like, at least a few weeks. Implied to be a semester, which is about three, four months. You know, that's... You know, again, it, it's one of those things where Carmine did to screw up, but what Kieran did went on for months. Again, in context, which, you know, that's that's not something, you know, and I'm sorry fixes. I mean, again, e even then, when you're you're that old, again, that that's still deliberately being a dick to everyone is still something that you know within your power to not do. Angst doesn't make you be a dick to everyone. Carmine knows he's obsessive. That's why we tell the truth. Yeah. Again, Carmine at the very least had good intentions for what she did. Well, again, that is again key difference. Uh, you know, Carmine didn't do a good thing. But the reason she did it was because she knew if she tells him, he's going to go off the reservation. Which is what you don't want to happen. Maybe you need to remember that Kieran was a young teen. Is maybe pretty bad calls. Yeah, he did make a lot of bad calls. But again, I, I don't think everyone goes into the I'm going to be a, a dick to everybody at the school and make it my own personal punching bag, which again is... Again, he, he crossed some lines. Carmine crossed a line, but Kieran crossed several lines. There, there, there were several lines that Carmine, that Kieran crossed. So Kieran has a breakdown, just like his grandpappy gets his. <laughs> nah, gets his is not related to, uh, to Kieran. Which would be the case, but sadly they're not. Uh, Kieran is the rival in the... Well, one of the rivals in the Teal Mask and Indigo Disc. Funny being... It's my mom's kind of crossing the line. See, that's funny, though. That's done for comedic effect. That's not meant to be serious. You guys are just evil. Yeah, I guess this is definitely worse. But the thing is, 
Like again, Getsis is kind of the example of when so when a character is intended to be evil, that's entertaining. You know, he does some screwed up stuff, but he revels in it. It is, it is the revelry with which he has, with what he does, that makes it very entertaining. Oh, you turned into Shinotic. I think Gatsis is evil. Yeah, again, like, again, Gatsis. He's evil through and through. There is absolutely zero redeeming quality. There are zero redeeming qualities of Getsis. And that's cool. Because he just fully embodies being a dick. And I'm okay with that. Again, you're, you're, you, you love to hate Getsis. Yeah, he's uh, from Generation 5. So Black and White and Black and White 2 is the game that Getsis is from. One line too far for me. Yes. Yeah, again, Kieran is. Again, I mean, Kieran does cross a few lines. The other one, don't know. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's like, yes, he didn't intend to be a dick, but again, he did cross a line. He, he crossed it. I like Cyrus, because the thing is, again, Cyrus, villain done well. The reason why Cyrus did what he did is. When he was younger, he did not live up to the expectations his parents had, and they were, and basically he was, he was disappointed. He couldn't, like, live up to what his parents wanted him to do. So, that was why he basically went into depression. He was like, you know what? I think all of us can relate to that kind of a thing, where, you know, we've let people down, and it doesn't feel good, and that's basically where the whole thing of, you know, emotions need to be expunged from existence came from. Again, cross the line. He's a bit, you know, not all there, but that is an idea that we can understand. Alright, but this is where things are going to need to end. It is dinner soon. So, this is going to be our final check of Latias. She is not shiny. We're going to go on a raid. If you haven't done so already, don't forget to subscribe for more. Leave a like on the stream. And let's go find somebody to raid. Again, like I love Getsis. Again, Getsis is a villain where you can revel in the villainy, which I love. It's like, when you make a character a villain, but you make them enjoy what they are doing, that's fun, and you can like them. But when you like try to like, kind of like, oh, like pull the punches on, well, no, no, they're, you, you wanna like this character because they're a good guy, you know, it, it, it kind of pulls out a lot of the impact of them being villainy-ish. We're gonna go raid Zed, our friend, Mr. Bread Guy. Well, no, I mean, the that is the explanation of the manga, which the manga is kind of messed up. See the champion lived in. But yeah, we're gonna go raid our friend Zed. Again, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe for more. Copy that. Raid tag, the mechanized Maxis raid, and let's go raid to Zed. He is shiny hunting for Snorlax. Back in Pokemon Legends Arceus, or as I like to call it, Lemon Arcanine. Llama Apocalypse. Leone Abaki. There's a whole bunch of names we can give it that game. But I will see you guys next time. Remember, the Ogre's Den is where one of those things was, and also he wanted to go and catch Ogre Pond. But I will see you guys tomorrow, or possibly later tonight if we do anything else. Okay, bye.